Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Gabe, and this is Games with Gabe, and this is the next episode in the C++ for Java Developer series. In the last episode, I asked you to create this linked list where you could add different elements to it, and then iterate through it, print out those elements, then finally delete the list. In this episode, I'm going to go over the solution to this, then we're going to talk about references, and then I'll give you a practice project to sort of combine everything we've learned so far. So first of all, how did I accomplish this solution? Well, what I did was I created a few helper functions up here with this main structure. The structure is very simple. It just has an integer, which is the value. Then it has a pointer to another linked list structure, which is the next linked list. Okay, so this next pointer is kind of the key to how this works. Then we have this add function, which basically takes in a linked list pointer and a value. And what we do is we start iterating through the list and we look for the end of the list, right? We say while iter next is not null, we continue to iterate. Uh, this will leave us onto the very last iterator in our linked list. Then we create a new part to the list and we say uh, next part's value is the value they added. Then we set the next pointer to a null pointer. That way this is now the end of the list. And then we set the last element in the list next pointer to this new one that we just created. Now you could append the list to the beginning of the linked list and that is valid as well. Uh, I decided to append it to the end of it because I feel like if you're adding something to a list, it makes more sense to put it at the end of the list. Then I have this function create linked list, which basically just kickstarts everything. So we create a new linked list node and then we just set the value to whatever first value they give us. And then we set the next pointer to null since this only has one value in it and then we just return that list. And then finally, the delete function basically just goes and iterates through the list. And as we iterate through the list, we get a temporary uh, pointer to the iterator. Then we assign the iterator to the next value and then we delete the previous node. So we basically go through and we delete the nodes as we iterate, which should leave us with nothing. If you wanted to be super safe, you could also assign the values inside of temporary to null. So you could say temp next equals null pointer. That way, all the data inside of your uh, list gets reset to zero. It's not necessary, but it is a good habit. With all of that together, we get our final little program, which basically we can create a linked list and we can add an arbitrary amount of values to it. And then we can iterate through it and display those values. And then we can finally delete the list if we want to. And if we run this, you can see that we just get 10, 8, 4, or 6, 4, 2, which is exactly what we added, uh, starting with 10 as the first value. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about references real quick. So one of the things I'm sure you guys have noticed is that as we continue to use C++, it becomes more advantageous to us to use pointers. That way we're not copying elements every time we want to pass, say, a large array or something, right? So we pass a pointer and the syntax for that is kind of ugly, I guess you could say. So basically, if you have some structure and you want to pass a pointer to that structure, uh, what you have to do is you have to give the ampersand and you have to give that variable. So say you have a function that takes in a pointer to this structure struct, which I've just created. Uh, then in order to call this function with some value that is of type struct, you would have to basically say func or fun and then pass in the ampersand of my horribly drawn ampersand and then whatever your variable was, right? And that can look a little bit clunky. And then in order to use this pointer inside the function, then you have to say pointer and use the pointer notation instead of the dot notation like we talked about. One of the other things that this brings with it is the fact that this pointer could be a null pointer, right? If you pass in a null pointer or garbage to this function, that's perfectly valid, right? And so inside of this function, we may have to check to see if it is a null pointer or not so that we don't accidentally get an access violation. Well, C++ has created the construct of references, which is basically exactly what we're doing here, right? We're just passing this pointer by reference, right? It, it's just a pointer, but we basically just want to refer to whatever object is actually located at this pointer. So instead we could define our function, make it look like this. We could say we want a struct reference and the reference would use the ampersand operator. And this would be our reference. Then inside of the function, we could just say uh, ref dot, which would give us the same access as this pointer notation, except now we can use the dot notation. Uh, to send a variable to the function, we would just have to say function and then pass it the variable. And that will now pass it by reference. Now, what does passing by reference mean? Well, it means exactly the same thing as point passing it by a pointer, right? 
uh, if we have this variable, this is basically just doing a pointer here and an ampersand here, right? It's almost doing it for us automatically, but having a reference instead of a pointer does give you one big advantage, which is you cannot pass a null pointer to a reference. C++ will not allow it. So this means that if you start taking things in by reference to your functions, then you will no longer have to worry about garbage being passed in and you still get the same benefits of the speed of not having to copy an entire object. Now, with this in mind, this is a fairly simple concept. It's just you have to learn the new syntax and you have to realize that this is the same as what we were doing here. Let's go ahead and modify our linked list code to instead of using pointers, use references. So we have this vector3.h library, right? This is a very good case of where we would want to actually use references. Uh, we do not want to pass this vector as a copy. You could, and it wouldn't be that bad, but instead what we could do is we could pass all these vectors by reference. So I'm just gonna change all of these to reference vectors. So we will do the same thing over here and I'll go through and finish this up real quick. All right, so now we have all of these vectors as references. They're basically pointers just masquerading as regular structures, right? And this is great because now instead of passing three floats, which would be 12 bytes for one vector three, most likely, uh, so this would be a total of 24 bytes for two vector threes. Instead of doing that, I believe a pointer is only one byte. I might be wrong on that. So this would now be just two bytes that we're passing instead of 24 bytes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have larger and larger objects, this does add up and it's useful. So you usually want to pass by reference in a case like this. In order to make this work properly, we would also want to make sure that we are now passing by reference here and in all of our other functions, right? We just want to change the function signatures to match. So I'll go through here real quick and make sure that they all match properly. All right, so now I've gone through and made sure that all of my uh, vectors are now references. And you'll notice I didn't have to change anything else because we can use the dot notation with a reference, except we're still accessing it as if it was a pointer. And to illustrate how this really is just a pointer, we're gonna go ahead and we'll create a couple of vector threes and see what happens. So I'm gonna create a vector three A and I'm gonna initialize this to uh, one, two, three, okay? And then we'll create a vector three B and I'm gonna initialize this to zero, three, zero, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our math library and we're gonna call add. So we're gonna say add A to B and we'll capture that result into a variable just called result, okay? Then we'll just say math print result. Now, if we run this, we're gonna expect just to see uh, one, five, three as our result, which should be what we get. So let's go ahead and run this very quickly. And sure enough, we get one, five, three as our result, but let's take a closer look at what's happening. So if I put a breakpoint right here very quickly and I run this, let's step past A and step past B, the creation of A and the creation of B. And then let's go ahead and inside of our watch window, let's type in what is the address of A and what is the address of B. And what you'll notice is for the address of A, I get 2422 EFFBCA. And for the address of B, I get 2422 EFFBF8. So you can see that they differ just at the last, we get C8 and F8. Those are the addresses. Now, if we step into the function right here, which is math add by hitting F11, and we step into here, uh, we can use these same variables because we call it A and B here as well. And notice this, look, it says that the address of A is C8, the address of B is F8, and that is the same exact address. Now, let's really hammer this home. I'm gonna change this to be not a reference. I'm gonna change this to be not a reference. Then we're gonna go over here and change these to be not a reference, not a reference, and let's run this code one more time. So if we look at the address of A and B, we get 0838, and then if we step into the function now, we should expect them to be different, right? And that's exactly what we get. These are completely different addresses. <laughs> like this ends in nine zero and C zero. Uh, once again, if we just step out of this, we get zero eight and three eight. So they were at completely different addresses. Why? Because we created a completely different object in our memory and they were located at different memory addresses. So when we simply change 
to passing by reference, it may look like we didn't really do much, but we're actually saving quite a bit by just passing by reference, okay? And so if you ever hear somebody talking about passing by reference in C++, this is exactly what they're talking about. They just want to pass it without passing the whole object or copying the whole object. And there are these implicit copy constructors and all this stuff that goes on under the hood in C++, which we will learn about later. But for now, just know that if you pass by reference, it's essentially the same as passing the pointer's address. Okay, now for today's challenge, I want you to create an arbitrary list sorter, okay? So basically, we're going to create a new include file, and I'm just going to call this list.h. Now, this isn't really going to be a list, but we'll just sort of pretend it is, okay? And we're going to have a structure, which is called the list. And this is basically going to hold an integer pointer. So this will be our values. Or even, I guess we could just call this our data. And then we'll have another integer, which is just the size. So how much data do we have? And lastly, we'll have an integer max size, which is how much capacity does this list have? Now, this is going to follow the format of a dynamic array, where basically, if we add more stuff to the list, then the list will grow to accommodate that new data. So we should never run out of room. We can add as much data as we want. Look up dynamic array if you're not familiar with this concept. It's essentially the same thing as like a list in Java, right? You can add arbitrary number of elements to it. Then we're going to have a namespace and we'll just call this n list. I'll do n for namespace for now. Uh, this is going to allow us to create the list and add stuff. So we'll say uh, list create list, which will take in an integer size. Okay. Uh, this will create a list with the initial size of whatever size you pass in. Then we want to be able to say void add integer a and actually we will take a list reference list. Okay, so we're using references now instead of pointers. So this function will take in a list and then it will add this integer a to the list, all right? And lastly, we'll have a function sort. So we'll take in sort and we will take in a reference to a list and this should sort the list. And then finally, we'll have a print function which takes in a list reference. So I want you to go ahead and implement these, right? adding should add the element to the list you should be able to add as many elements as you want and i almost forgot we need our final one which is actually i'm going to call this destroy so we don't steal a keyword and this will destroy the list so adding adds the element to the list it will grow if it needs to so that can hold it then sorting will sort the list so it should uh, reorder everything inside the list and put it in correct order print should print the list, right? It should show us exactly what's inside it. And destroy should delete everything inside the list. And we should be left with nothing, right? It should reset the size and max size to zero. And we have cleaned up all memory, no memory leaks. This is a fairly simple programming problem, but it incorporates a lot of what we've learned about. It incorporates pointers, memory management, and incorporates references so that we can pass things by reference, it incorporates namespaces, structures, okay? So there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but it shouldn't be too difficult. I will reveal the solution at the start of the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode where I talk about the static keyword. I know I said we would be talking about memory management, but we've sort of been talking about that on and off, and I'll leave a dedicated video to that at the end of the series instead. So we'll talk about the static keyword and the different contexts it has and how we can use that. All right, guys, I will see you then. Thanks for watching.